Chandra Natsalansi here for Woodworkers Journal Magazine. And if you read my tutorial on dust collectors in the print edition of the magazine, you'll know that modern dust collectors are awesome. Whether you have a small shop that can use a unit like the uh, dust right mounted on the wall behind me here, or if you have a bigger shop that needs a more powerful collector like this three horsepower Powermatic equipped with its own cyclone. These collectors all have the size and the power and the features necessary to do a good job of keeping your shop free of this stuff, as well as the fine dust that can end up in the air and cause you some respiratory problems. More than 20 years ago, I wrote Woodshop Dust Control, a book intended to help woodworkers deal with the complexities involved with designing collection systems for their small or medium-sized shops. Now, after visiting dozens and dozens of wood shops around the country that all had some kind of dust collection, um, I realized that woodworkers really often didn't understand how an effective collection system was meant to work. They often ended up with a ductwork system that was badly designed, connected to an underpowered collector, ultimately resulting in really poor collection performance. So why do we need to know the principles of air handling to better understand dust collection? Well, simply because air is the very medium we use to first capture sawdust and chips at the source, such as a table saw, planer, or sanding table, and then transport it through a pipe or hose to the dust collector itself. Now, moving air has three principal properties that are important to understand if we're going to make the best use of it in setting up our collection systems. First, air has a volume. Second, moving air has a velocity. And third, air moving through a pipe or hose is subject to friction. Now let's examine these three properties one at a time, and then look at how the three are interrelated. Don't worry, we won't be doing any math, and there won't be a pop quiz at the end of the video. Anyone who's ever blown up a balloon has no doubt that air has a volume that occupies the entire space it's allowed to fill. In the case of dust collection, that means that a large diameter hose or duct can carry more air and sawdust than a small one. This is especially important when you're trying to collect chips from a machine that generates big shavings, such as a planer, dual press, or shaper. Okay, so no surprises so far. A big diameter hose can carry a larger volume of air and sawdust than a small one. But what might surprise you is how much more it can carry. And for that, I'm going to do a little Mr. Science experiment using this 2-inch and this 4-inch uh, fittings. Um, and we're going to use these blue marbles to represent molecules of air or particles of sawdust, if you will. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour enough in to form a single layer across the bottom of this 2-inch fitting. There we go, that's about right. And as you can see, that's not many marbles. I'm going to transfer them to this cute little Pyrex here. You can see that they basically only form a single layer across the bottom. So now then, let's get those out of there. We're going to do the same thing now with our four inch pipe fitting. So just one layer across the bottom of these marbles, which are all the same diameter. Okay, that's about right. So as you can see, that's a lot more marbles. And in fact, if we put them in here, you get a better idea just how many more there are. And if we were to count all these, we'd find that in fact, there are about four times as many marbles, meaning that even though a four inch diameter pipe or hose is only twice the diameter of a two inch one, it'll carry four times the volume of air and chips. Pretty significant. In order to have velocity, air must be moving. And that is exactly what the fan inside a dust collector does, move air. But instead of blowing air like a regular house fan, it sucks air like a vacuum cleaner to capture sawdust and then transport it back to the collector. 
But because different size hoses and ducts contain different volumes of air, the air flowing through a narrow hose will naturally travel at a higher speed than through a wider hose, given that the same amount of fan pressure is applied. I can demonstrate this by blowing through these two tubes, which I know is the reverse of what a dust collector does. I'm blowing rather than sucking, but since I'm going to be using sawdust in this example, I don't want a mouthful of sawdust. But the principle is the same. So I'm going to spread out a small handful of sawdust here. Let's see what happens when I blow at it from about this far away from with this uh, soda straw thin tube. You can see that uh, things happen pretty quickly and easily. And I'm blowing kind of medium hard. Now let's do the same thing using this wider tube. Let's see, got about the same amount of sawdust here. Same distance, same lung power. <sighs> You can see obviously that since the sawdust doesn't scatter as quickly, the air is obviously moving at a slower speed than when I blow at it with the small tube. Really clear. So why do we need to concern ourselves with air velocity? Well, because if the speed of the air traveling through our ductwork is too slow, dust won't get captured properly, or worse, it can settle inside the ductwork on the weight of the collector and eventually cause a clog. We can demonstrate this using a shop vacuum. Fitted with its regular 2-inch hose, it pulls in dust easily. But when we reconnect it to a 4-inch hose, Air velocity slows significantly, resulting in poor collection. So at this point you're probably thinking, why not just keep the air flowing through a dust system at a super high velocity? Well that brings us to our third principle of air handling, friction. When you feel the wind blowing against your face, you're essentially feeling the friction generated by the air molecules striking your skin. Now when air and sawdust travel through ductwork, friction is generated as the particles hit against the inside of the duct or hose. This results in a reduction in airflow and some loss in collection performance. The longer the ductwork, or the more twists and turns it takes, the greater the friction and loss of collection efficiency. I can demonstrate this using an old-fashioned manometer and a pitot tube. Manometer is basically a U-shaped tube filled with liquid that can be used to measure air pressure and velocity. I'll start by measuring the air velocity pressure in this 10-foot length of hose connected to the collector. I punch a small hole for the pitot tube, then with the collector running, insert it to take the measurement. An air pressure of 8 tenths of an inch above and below the zero mark translates to an airspeed of 5,065 feet per minute and a volume of 440 cubic feet per minute. Now let's see what happens when we add length and complexity to our ductwork setup. I'm adding 10 more feet of 4-inch hose plus three 90-degree elbows to the original 10-foot hose connected to the dust right dust collector. Now we'll use our manometer and pitot tube to take another measurement. This time, air pressure is cut to only one-tenth of an inch resulting in an airspeed of 2,533 feet per minute and a volume of only 220 CFM, literally half of what we started with. Length and complexity aren't the only things that result in pressure losses in a dust system. For convenience, I use flex hose in my demonstration. But the fact is that the ridges in flex hose cause a lot more friction than the smooth surfaces inside metal or plastic ductwork. That's why it's always a good idea, regardless of your system, to keep your flex hose lengths as short as possible. As mentioned earlier, narrow hoses and ducts generate more air friction per foot than wide ones do. But there are other sources of friction and pressure loss in dust systems such as the dust ports on our machines, 
the fittings used to make ductwork transitions, and even the filters on the collector itself. The bottom line is that the more friction and pressure loss there is in a collection system, the harder the dust collector has to work to get the job done. If the collector's motor and fan aren't powerful enough to overcome the pressure losses, the only alternatives are to shorten the ductwork, make it less complex, or replace the dust collector with a more powerful unit. So, to sum things up, air moving through a dust collection system has volume, velocity, and is subject to friction. A larger duct can carry a greater volume of air and sawdust but at a slower velocity than through a smaller one, and is subject to less friction and pressure loss, but also requires a greater air moving capacity, in other words, higher CFM from the dust collector. In contrast, a narrower duct carries a smaller volume of air and sawdust at a faster velocity and will capture and transport sawdust more readily than through a large duct but it's subject to higher pressure losses, thus requiring more power, in other words, a higher static pressure rating from the dust collector. I hope this video has helped convince you that designing and setting up a collection system properly is a pretty complex matter, and one that warrants either spending time following the air handling design steps outlined in my book, or getting help from an air handling specialist. Once you've designed your ideal system, you'll be able to pick a dust collector with the right combination of air volume capacity and static pressure handling power to run your system efficiently and deliver first-class sawdust collecting performance.